All right, great. So now, let's confirm its frequency. So I'm going to adjust the time scale for 0 0 0.2 milliseconds per horizontal box. All right, so now I'm going to use my position knobs. I'm going to position the peaks here right at the horizontal center crosshair because on this horizontal center crosshair and also the same with the vertical one there are divisions on each box that help us that help us and they're point two divisions in other words so right here is zero point two point four point six point eight one box one point two one point four one point six one point eight two boxes and so on and that helps us get more precise measurements so I'm going to position Right on there, right there. Aha, uh -huh. okay. And now I want to move it horizontally such that the first peak here is on the first, the, the leftmost line. And there's the leftmost line right in the middle. Right in the middle. So, what the hell? Aha. Excellent. Okay, so now from here to here is one period. So I want to see how many 10 of these periods fit in the boxes. So let's see here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 peaks. And let's see how many boxes those 10 peaks fit in. So 1 box, 2 box, 3 box, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, uh, uh, 9 point, point 4, 8, 9 point 4, 8 boxes. So let's keep in mind something here. If all 10 peaks fit in exactly those 10 boxes, we'd have exactly 5,000 hertz, but we don't. So let's see just what frequency we do have. So for this example, your numbers will be different. For this example, we got 9.48 boxes and 10 peaks. Okay, great. Divide this by 10 to find out how many boxes one peak is in. One peak in 0.948 boxes. All right, great. So now we want to switch from boxes to time. Use the conversion factor. 1.2 milliseconds per box. All right, do that conversion and find the period of our wave. And then the reciprocal or the multiplicative inverse is the frequency. So in my example, 5.27 kilohertz. That's what I have. We don't have exactly 5,000 hertz, 5.27 kilohertz. All right. So now we're done with the time knobs. So I'm going to put it to a more convenient time orientation for us. All right, so now I'm removing the function generator from channel one, and now we're ready to put together our circuit. Okay, so this red knob here for R1 is screaming to be the high end. So I'm gonna put it in series this way. R1 in series with R2, and now the function generator going into the red here, and let's see, going in through R1, through the series connector, through R2, out, the low end must be here. Right there, that's the low end. Okay, so now we need information. Information, so I'm gonna take channel one and put them across both. So let's see, the high end here, and then the low end out here. So channel one's across both of them. Let me show you on the diagram just what I'm talking about. Uh, let's see here. Let's see here. So channel one is across both R1 and R2. All right. All right. All right. So now channel two, channel two, let's put that across R2. R2. So let's see. So what the, what the high end, low end. And let's show you. So channel two, channel two is this. V out is channel two. All right. Okay. So now let's take a look at our V in channel one. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Oh, so okay. So now I'm going to put the bottom peak at the bottom line here to help me out with my measurements, and then I'm going to center one of these peaks on the vertical center crosshair with because that also has those convenient divisions. So let me yeah 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 uh -huh. 
Okay, okay, whoa, okay, this is, a, this is kind of a surprise to us. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven point uh, two four, seven point two four. Interesting. Interesting. Not quite eight. Not quite eight. So there must be some third impedance that's in the picture now that wasn't in before. Think about that. So now our V in seven point two four volts. That's our V in. V in is not eight at seven point two four. For us, for this particular example. All right. All right. So now, so now, down with channel one. Let's find V out. So I'm going to use this switch here to switch to channel two. And as I move it once, I have both of them, and I just want channel two. All right. So let's see. That's uh, okay. So that's one one box per per uh, one box is one volt. And I can do a little better than that. 0.5, a little, and that. Uh, no, that's too much. Go down. Okay, great. So now, just like before, put that down to the bottom to help me out, and then center it on the on the center cross here with the convenient divisions. Okay, one box, two, three, three, two, four. So three point two four boxes, and then I have it on one and point five volts. So three point two five times point five volts per box. That's V out for this particular example. And that's the data for the first part. <sighs> Let's go to the second part now. What mysteries await us in part two? Oh, so once again, a voltage divider. Aha. Okay, so R2, that's the same R2 as before, so that's comforting. And then a new element, our wire. Okay, okay. Okay, so everything's the same as before. This V wires are V out now. Grounded. All right, all right. So now let's see here. From our familiar loop log, great right, V in is, is going to be the sum of V2 plus V wire. We know that. So V2 could, would, is V in minus V wire. Now, if we measure V in, measure V wire, we can find V2 this way. And so now we're going to find the current in a slightly different way than from part one. V2 is I R2. I is in V2, what we just found here, divided by R2. Slightly different way to find the current. But there it is.